down there so they can't see us. Anyway. It is. Oh, okay, that's what happened. sent you a reply and that's what threw off my email. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. In the presence of the resurrected Christ, let us praise God, singing hymn number 621 in the Breaking Bread hymnal, Rain Down, number 621. Please stand. Yeah. 
special good morning to everybody gathered here and as always we continue our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. my friends may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you Amen. again a special welcome to everybody gathered here especially those people who aren't usually here those who have come for the special baptism that we're going to have Amanda and um, John's uh, child, Alaria, is going to be welcomed into the community of the church, and we will celebrate with them. And of course, as always, we celebrate our own faith here on this 32nd Sunday, and we are reminded in our challenging readings about not so much the end of times, but the importance of the time that we have, and of making use with that time in a way that is good and right and just. We take a moment and we ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness and for a change of heart when we have misused the invitations that God has given us. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to help the blind to see. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus. You are the Word made flesh who dwells among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and ever-loving God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are good, true, and just. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and means them which all solitude.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, consult one another with these words. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. The foolish ones when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise ones brought flask of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom had long delayed, they all became very drowsy and they fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and they trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and they said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said to them in reply, Amen, amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, once again, again, a special welcome to everybody gathered here and especially to uh, Amanda and John's family and friends who are here to uh, welcome Alel uh, into the community of the church. It is a very special day. Uh, a couple weeks back, I was on my way home from work and I was listening to uh, an NPR special podcast that is one of my favorites entitled Unsung Heroes. And what it is, a variety of people share different experiences that they have with encounters with people that are oftentimes strangers that uh, usually had a profound impact upon them. And on this particular day, uh, it was a young woman who was from South Carolina. She was going through her own personal mental health crisis. She had just broken up with a the love of her life of four or five years. And she had just uh, been rejected from her uh, fifth job interview. So needless to say, she was feeling pretty down and pretty blue. And so as she was walking, she uh, decided to run over to the Whole Foods grocery store, which was rather crowded because it was five o'clock rush hour. And as she was crossing the street, she noticed that there was a man out in the front door, wearing multiple layers of clothing, looking rather ragged, unkept. And of course, he was asking various people for money. And then she said, you know, when I crossed the street, sure enough, he turned and he looked directly at me and he asked for money. The woman then admitted, she said, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it's probably just as well. I was pretty harsh. But it was something like, leave me the hell alone, bug off. She said, I soon pushed my way through the doors of the store. And as I was perousing the aisles, I found myself very much on edge. And I felt pretty rattled by the experience that I just had. But she said, mostly, I was really disgusted with myself. And I was asking, what have you become? What's the matter with you? She said, I immediately ran outside and I hustled over to the man who was still there. She said, I apologized profusely and I started digging for the change that was in my pocket. And as I reached over to give it to him, he took my hand in both of his and he looked at me very intently and said, hey, it's going to be okay. She said, I suddenly felt as though he was seeing right through me and he could see the pain that I was in. She said, suddenly my eyes filled up and I started to cry. The woman then admitted, she said, if he were here today, I would tell him he was my unsung hero. He was the one I would thank for being the light in that very, very dark period of my own life. The narrator of the podcast then proceeded to say that the woman um, herself, after that encounter, proceeded to uh, enter into a program for people who were struggling with eating disorders, and she is currently in the process of getting her life back together. Uh, it was a very powerful story, needless to say, and it was powerful namely because the woman that experienced it was telling it herself. And undoubtedly she was conveying the importance of this kind of chance encounter that was unexpected, but allowed her to refocus her energies on the present and what really was of value and importance to her and the transition that sat before her. I think it would be a mistake if we were to look at today's scripture to recognize and see that this is really talking to us about the end of times. Um, instead, really, the scriptures that we heard today is really not so much about the things that are at the end of time, but more importantly, it's about those things that are important today that have lasting value, meaning, worth. And not to be morbid, 
we all know um, the end of the world will eventually happen and that the end of our own lives will also take place, but we really don't know the day, the time when it's gonna happen. It could be a couple weeks, a couple months, maybe many, many years. We do not know. We do not know the day nor the time. What's important, however, is that we recognize the importance of today and the present and to see and value what is important for us today, right now. And truthfully, we all admit that that can usually be very difficult because we're usually so rushed from all the things that are sitting before us that we feel we have to do and fulfill and kind of squeeze into our day. But hopefully, today's scripture invites us to slow down, to be a little bit more conscious and aware of what sits before us. And that maybe the story of the unsung hero for that woman calls us to maybe consider some of the unsung heroes within our own lives, those people who have um, reminded us and brought us back to what really is important of value, worth, and meaning, that in their own unique way have revealed to us God's radiant grace in ways that we kind of had forgotten about or ignored. I am reminded, especially again, when I'm in my own rushed frenzy, and maybe speaking to my nieces or nephew, and they will end the conversation on the phone. I love you, Uncle Sean. And I stop and say, hey, and I love you too. Um, it is these kind of encounters and experiences and the experiences of this woman that again remind us of uh, God's grace that is waiting to be revealed within our own lives and reminding us that everything's going to be okay. May God's peace and all that is good be with you. I would now like to invite John and Amanda and Alaria and their godparents to please come to the back of the, really the front of the church, uh, the baptismal font, as we as a parish community welcome Alaria into the community of the church and uh, we attain a new parishioner here at St. John St. Anne's. So mom and dad, um, what name do you give to your beautiful child that you have here today? Alaria Cora Carroll. And what is it that you ask of the church? We wish for her to be baptized into the church. Okay. In asking to have Alaria baptized, you are taking the responsibility of raising her in the faith, of teaching her the commandments, and showing her the love of God in neighbor and in deed. Do you understand this responsibility and what you are undertaking? We do. And godparents, are you willing to help the parents in assuming this responsibility? Yes. Okay. Ilaria, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. I mark you with the sign of the cross to show that you are now entering into a new relationship with Jesus and the community of the church. And I invite your parents and your godparents to do the same. And now, mom and dad and godparents, I ask you to renew your own baptismal promises and after each petition, respond with, I do. Do you renounce Satan I do. and all of his works I do. and all of his empty promises? I, do. I now invite you to, uh, to uh, profess your own faith and after each petition, joined by the community here at St. Francis to respond with, I do. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, 
rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And do you, the Catholic Christian community here at St. Francis, do you promise to be of support and help to Amanda and John, who cannot raise Alaria alone in the faith, but must rely on our own prayers, our support, and our prophetic witness to the good news of the gospel? My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. Let us profess what we believe in word and deed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Alaria, I'm not going to ruin your hair, but probably <laughs> you could come over this way. Um, 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 okay. Let's see. Alaria, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That wasn't so bad. Okay. Laria, Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth through water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you to a holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that you may remain a member of Christ as priest, prophet, and king. Laria, see in this white garment, it is a reminder that you have become a new creation, a new creation and clothe yourself in Christ Jesus. That white garment is to be a sign of your own Christian dignity. And with your family and friends, we are going to help you through our own word and example to bring that dignity unstained to the everlasting life of God. And now, who's going to help me with that candle? Okay, parents and godparents, receive this light of Christ. This is being entrusted to you in order to be kept burning brightly. Alaria has been enlightened by Christ. May she always walk as a child of the light, persevering in faith. May, may she run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in his heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. And Alaria, the Lord made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May the Lord touch your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim the good news of Jesus. My friends, I would now ask everybody to join with me in welcoming the newest member to our Catholic Christian community here at St. Francis. And now we'll continue standing as we bring our own prayers and our petitions before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of wisdom, that the Church may discern God's presence through the signs of our times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of patience and endurance for people who long and work for justice, let us pray to the Lord. For the Spirit to move hearts to bring an end to wars and divisions, that are destroying the lives of people throughout our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the willingness to accept Advent's invitation to deep silence and prayer as we wait for Christ to arrive within our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the security and return of the hostages held by Hamas and for their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For engaged couples preparing for the sacrament of marriage, 
To deepen their commitment to each other in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are weighed down by the burden of age, sickness, and poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For comfort and hope for all who mourn and eternal life for our death in Christ, including Martino Fuchsia and Hank Diagazer Sr., let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people and situations that we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for Alaria, who has been welcomed and received into the community of the church today, that as she begins her Christian journey, she will be inspired by her own example of how to live the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed, and for her parents, Amanda and John, that they too may grow in wisdom and grace as they, again, serve as witnesses of bringing the good news to all the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you continue to pour forth your spirit upon all of us gathered here. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity as we seek to carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be accepted by our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy day, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table, the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives. May they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks and praise, almighty and ever-loving God, for the countless ways in which you seek to reveal yourself to all the world and through your Son, Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we know you are continuously inviting us to change our hearts that they may come to know peace and reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts 
so that enemies begin to speak to one another. Adversaries join hands in friendship, and people seek the way of peace together. By the working of your spirit, it comes about, O Lord, when hatred is overcome by love, when revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. And so we give you endless thanks, and we now join our voices with the choirs of heaven, and together, without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread into his sacred hands. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all your holy people, your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
together in one voice and one heart, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Gracious and loving God, nourished by this holy gift, we give you thanks and we ask for your mercy. We pray that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure within all of us gathered here, that we may grow in wisdom and grace to take advantage and value the present and to seek to bring about your kingdom today. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. And before departing, I think probably everybody knows, uh, across the street, John and Amanda, we are uh, having a special uh, hospitality for the community gathered here as we welcome the newest member to our community of uh, St. Francis and the church, and all are invited. Um, do we have any uh, birthdays or uh, anniversaries people want to acknowledge or call attention to? Ah. Uh, We thought you looked more radiant and beautiful than the week before, so that's acknowledgement of your birthday. That's good. What's it? Anybody else? Birthday? Anniversary? Anybody have important news that they want to share? I think Kathleen may have some. Oh, Joyce Flanagan. We know that. We've missed you. Well, thank you. We're glad you're back. We'll be sending the envelopes. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. Good morning. Just a couple things. A couple of weeks ago, I said to Padre, we don't have a turkey. We don't have a box of stuffing. And he said, Kathleen, the Lord will prevail. And thanks to your generous donations, thanks to Antoinette's daughter, Teresa, whose company, <clears throat> food drive, they came in from Boston. We've got St. Pius, we've got St. Edwards, St. Thomas, CBA. Who else? Um, St. Gregory's. St. Gregory's. Uh, the firehouse is full. We are going to feed and provide for over 150 families. So thank you so much. And lastly, this week we will be distributing the bags. And I could use a couple volunteers if anybody is available. Tomorrow we'll be packing the bags. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning, we will distribute them to the families. They will come to the uh, center and pick them up. So if anybody is available, tomorrow, anytime during the day, and then Wednesday, 10 to 12, 1 to 3, Thursday, 10 to 12, 1 to 3, and Friday, 10 to 12. So let me know if anybody can help. That'd be wonderful. Thanks again. Thank you. Yes. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God be showered upon all of us gathered here that we may grow in hope and wisdom and grace and may God's blessings be upon all of us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Have a great rest of the day. Please join us across the street. And if you can't, uh, still have a great week. Be safe, and thank you for coming. Please join us in our sending forth hymn, number 770 in the gathering, in the gather hymnal. Soon and very soon, number 770. Very soon we are going to see the King.